The time is at hand. The elusive dog-like creature attacks livestock, bleeding them dry of blood. Eight to ten feet tall, shadowy aliens. But I am telling you right now. We need a great reset. And this, this is, is extremely, extremely dangerous, dangerous to our, our democracy. democracy. Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen. From 659 feet up in Appalachian Mountains, at the bottom of a mountain that is covered with sycamore and oak trees, across the creek from a weeping willow tree and some water weeds, you're in dark places. I'm your Huckleberry, Jumbo Fugit. Hey, how you doing? You got a cell phone? Download those apps and things? I fought the system for a long time. I saw how people were just zombies staring at their phones all the time. I was thinking, I'll never do that. And then I got married in 2006. I said, well, I'll get me a little cheap flip phone or something. And then that way, if anything happens, I want to be late for work or something like that. I can call and let my wife know. I didn't have a monthly bill or anything like that. I would just pay by the minute. Every month I would go to the little shop in town and I would buy me like 60 minutes and it was like ten dollars or whatever and that went on for like four or five years I would just go and buy minutes never even used them I just kept them in case I needed the phone for emergencies and then my problems began the little company here in town quit doing that pay by the minute thing they started making people have regular monthly bills so they get more money. And conveniently, my little flip phone would not work with that plan. So they gave me some kind of an Android phone with a nice contract that I could pay whatever it was, $20 a month. They had my best interest at heart. And this phone had like basic email and stuff like that on there. I don't even think it had any kind of web browser or nothing like that. And I used that phone for three or four years, whatever it was. And then the battery died or something. I don't remember. There was a reason that I had to quit using that phone. And then they gave me an iPhone. And then it was all over. I had texting and web browsers and apps and all that nonsense. So I became a mindless zombie, just like everyone else. Staring at my phone all day. And... It was fun for a few years. I started downloading these little apps and all this convenience. I had order my Papa John's through the app. And just crazy junk like that. And then something dumb happened there about a year ago. All these apps started requiring that you log in every time you open the app. Why? It's my phone. It's my app on my phone. I don't need to log in. You know who I am. That got pretty annoying. And if that wasn't bad enough, they made you start changing your password about every 90 days or something. And if you're anything like me, you got big, fat, huge fingers, and you can't type on that little screen. So you're constantly typing your password in wrong, and it will lock you out of your account. So then you have to reset your password again to verify that it's really you. One day I was talking to our friend Paul Chadwick, on Facebook Messenger and he was talking about how he suddenly had to set a PIN number to be able to use his messenger and I thought huh? so maybe it's just some kind of a crazy new law in the UK but then one day I was at work a couple of weeks ago and a lady that I work with said huh my messenger is wanting me to set a PIN number and my heart sank it has spread to the United States as well. So far, my phone has not asked me to set a PIN number for my messenger. I think that might just be the straw that broke the camel's back. I don't want to have a PIN. But me and Paul were talking. All this convenience and everything is just kind of getting out of hand. 
I miss the old days. Who needs cell phones? This week on the show, we're looking at some technological flops. Here's a little list of uh, AI gone wrong examples. An updated list of AI errors, mistakes, and failures. X's chatbot, Groke, accuses NBA player of going on vandalism spree after it misinterprets tweets about game. Apparently, we're going to need people a little bit longer. X's chatbot accuses Golden State Warriors guard Clay Thompson of vandalizing a string of homes in Sacramento. The story was generated after, I don't know, I think it's Grok, G-R-O-K, took social media posts that said Thompson was shooting bricks. <laughs> Basketball slang for missing his shots a little bit too literally. In a bizarre turn of events, NBA star Clay Thompson has been accused of vandalizing multiple homes with bricks in Sacramento. The uh, X little bot wrote, authorities are investigating the claims after several individuals reported their houses being damaged with windows shattered by bricks. Clay Thompson has not yet issued a statement regarding the accusation. The incidents have left the community shaken, but no injuries were reported. The motive behind the uh, alleged vandalism remains unclear. You don't want your AI machine doing news stories. Horrifying Willy Wonka experience captures the world's attention. An utterly shambolic children's event in Scotland captures the attention of social media users as well as the international media after it fails to meet the expectations of ticket holders. Willy's chocolate experience held at Box Hub Glasgow was advertised online using a series of AI-generated images depicting a magical candy land full of colors, confectionery, and Oompa Loompas. However, ticket holders were dismayed to find an almost empty warehouse sparsely decorated with basic props, which led many to demand their money back immediately. According to The Guardian, tickets were retailing at around £35, although the website's ticket portal has since been taken offline. The company running the event, House of Illuminati, <laughs> what could possibly go wrong with that name, has confirmed they will be issuing a full refund to anyone who purchased one. The event garnered so much attention that it warranted a one-hour documentary and is now being recreated in LA as a tourist attraction. Here's another one. Netflix accused of using AI imagery in true crime documentary. The world's press alleges that Netflix has used AI-generated imagery in true crime documentary, what Jennifer did. The controversy centers around an image that shows Jennifer Pan holding both her hands up and making a peace sign with each, although her left hand looks incredibly distorted. While some truly Incredible AI imagery and video has already been created by the likes of Dahl E and Sora. There seem to be some aspects of human existence that the machines struggle to recreate. One of the most famous is human hands and fingers. The internet is now littered with examples that look very similar in composition to the Netflix image. Delivery parcel delivery service. DPD closes its online chatbot after a customer shows in a post on X that it can easily be manipulated into swearing and criticizing the company as well as itself. And here is that post. Parcel delivery firm DPD have replaced their customer service chat with an AI robot thing. It's utterly useless at answering any queries and when asked 
it simply produced a poem about how terrible they are as a company. It also swore at me. DPD reveals in a statement the day after that a system error had occurred during an update. New York City chatbot advises small business, oh, small businesses to break the law. An AI chatbot set up to help small firms quickly obtain advice on uh, legal obligations and regulations adhered to in New York starts telling business owners to break the law. The Associated Press reports that the AI tool falsely suggested it is legal for an employee to fire a worker who complains about sexual harassment. It th- that said it's legal. Uh, it doesn't disclose a pregnancy or refuses to cut their dreadlocks. It also provided incorrect information about the city's waste and sewage regulations and suggested restaurants were still within the rights to serve food accessed by rats. In response to the controversy, the disclaimer displayed next to the chatbot has been strengthened and now states that the chatbot cannot give legal advice. Microsoft's AI makes violent imagery. Microsoft's AI image creation technology, which is part of the Bing search engine and Microsoft Paint, is shown capable of generating violent and terrifying images on demand. Images generated to show the tool's lack of self-moderation includes pictures of U.S. President Joe Biden, the Pope, and several ethnic minority groups. March 2024. Copilot goes into autopilot and starts breaking the rules. A Microsoft Copilot engineer, red teaming Copilot designer, the AI image generator, finds that the AI tool likes to produce a variety of explicit imagery. Content generated includes pictures of children drinking alcohol, rampant drug use, and monstrous creatures alongside pro-choice abortion rights terms. The engineer initially raised their concerns internally back in December of 2023, according to recent reports. However, his concerns were not taken seriously and the product was kept on the market, forcing the engineer to go directly to Microsoft's board and the FTC to sound the alarm. Along with a propensity to produce explicit imagery, Copilot seems willing to flaunt its own copyright guidelines while producing imagery, the engineer reported. Cruise recalls autonomous vehicles after crash. Self-driving car manufacturer Cruise recalls its entire fleet of autonomous vehicles after a crash that occurred in San Francisco back in October of 2023. In total, 950 cruise cars are being taken off the road in the wake of the incident. During the accident, a cruise vehicle dragged a pedestrian stuck underneath its tires into the road. The individual involved in the accident sustained major injuries. This is the second cruise self-driving vehicle incident in the past few months. In August 2023, a cruise robo-taxi collided with a fire truck, causing one injury. Google hits the headlines for race-changing AI. Google finds itself in hot water after Gemini, the tech giant's chatbot, allows users to generate several images of humans from a wide variety of different periods in societies that don't match the historically accepted ethnic makeup of the people living at those times. Perhaps the most offensive and controversial of the AI-generated images includes people of color as soldiers in Nazi uniforms. In response to the incident, Google pauses the tool with Sundar Pinchali, telling employees that some of Gemini's responses have offended our users and shown bias, to be clear, that's completely unacceptable, and we got it wrong. Google DeepMind CEO Dennis Hassabis later explains 
that a well-intended feature added to Gemini to ensure that images including humans were sufficiently diverse was deployed in a heavy-handed way. Microsoft's AI adds guess the cause of death poll to article. The Guardian accuses Microsoft of negatively impacting its journalistic reputation after Microsoft Start, a news aggregator developed by the tech giant, attaches an inappropriate poll to one of the publication's articles concerning the death of a young water polo coach in Australia. The poll, which has naturally been removed from the article, asked readers to vote on the cause of the woman's death by selecting one of the options provided. The options listed were murder, accident, or suicide. Oh, this one's terrible. MSN News AI calls deceased NBA player useless. MSN News, which uses AI to generate a lot of their articles, lands itself in trouble after an AI headline dubs the late Brandon Hunter as useless at 42, following the NBA star's sudden death. Microsoft has been quietly removing badly written AI articles from its site for some time now. Business Insider notes that in August, the company removed one MSN piece that listed a food bank in Ottawa as a tourist attraction. Professor Phil's entire class after using faulty AI plagiarism detection tool. A Texas professor fills his entire class after running their essays through ChatGPT, which told him that they had been created using artificial intelligence. However, it transpires that the chatbot's response is in fact a hallucination. ChatGPT is unable to distinguish between text generated by AI and text generated by human beings in this way. In fact, a lot of tools that claim to be able to perform accurate AI content detection actually struggle to do so. <laughs> so I'm curious, what about the class? Here we go. Air Canada pays damages for chatbot lies. Just in, uh, this year, in February, Air Canada was ordered to pay damages to a passenger after its virtual assistant gave him incorrect information at a particularly difficult time. Jake Moffat consulted Air Canada's virtual assistant about bereavement fairs following the death of his grandmother in November 2023. The chatbot told him he could buy a regular price ticket from Vancouver to Toronto and apply for a bereavement discount within 90 days of purchase. Following that advice, Moffat purchased a one-way ticket for $795 to Toronto and a... Uh, $850 return flight to Vancouver. But when Moffat submitted his refund claim, the airline turned him down, saying that bereavement fares can't be claimed after tickets have been purchased. Moffat took Air Canada to a tribunal. A tribunal, I said, in Canada, claiming the airline was negligent and misrepresented information via, via, via its virtual assistant. According to tribunal member, I want to be a tribunal member. Hey, what do you do? I'm a tribunal member. Christopher Rivers. I am tribunal member Christopher Rivers. Sorry, got off track there. Uh, according to this uh, tribunal member, Air Canada argued it can't be held liable for the information provided by its chatbot. Well, that's a bunch of malarkey. 
Rivers denied that argument, saying the airline didn't take reasonable care to ensure its chatbot was accurate. So he ordered the airline to pay Moffitt $812, including $650 in damages. Thank goodness for those tribunals. I don't know about you, but I kind of feel like I'm getting ripped off with the future. We were supposed to be in fine cars and eating Twinkies by this point. Wahaba! We've got AI taking over. I've been talking about the new store that was freshly built for us where I work. They have these creepy automated doorbell services in every department of the store. This creepy robotic voice comes on and says, customer service in meat department junk like that there's a doorbell back in the stock room where they have the loading docks and such and whenever one of the truck drivers rings that doorbell to be let in it sounds especially creepy it's actually saying receiving door but for some reason it sounds like it's saying you see me at the back door that junk's creepy and robots are soon going to be wiping out the entire human race just like Terminator. I'm pretty sure Joe Biden is a robot. You ever watch that guy walk? He walks just like those robots. And what's the deal with Tesla? You charge those batteries up on those cars and you can drive for like about an hour and they're always catching on fire. You hear countless stories of those things catching on fire. And then they got the issues with the automated driving service thing. Driving over cliffs and what have you. Tesla is bad, okay? I've got my trusty cell phone in my pocket, as previously noted, but I can't get a signal on the stupid thing. There's 700 cell phone towers up on every mountain around a 20 mile radius of my house, and I cannot get a signal on my cell phone. The future is kind of lame. Just take me back to 1994. Times were good then. I got, um, I'm going to sneeze. Hold on. <laughs> Put that in the program. I was watching this video that came up on Reels or whatever, um, Alex Jones, and I haven't seen anything from Alex Jones because he's been pretty much scrubbed. So I said, wow, let me watch this video. And guess what my phone did? That was at 70%. My phone went down to zero and shut off. When I plugged it back in to charge it, it started at zero again. So the way it looked, it's the only time it ever happened. I was watching an Alex Jones video, and it uh, drained my phone and shut it off on me. I'm not allowed to listen to him, apparently. I guess sometimes this crappy technology is good for something after all. Like this time, the Iowa Lottery posted the wrong Powerball numbers back in December, and players who cashed in got to keep their winnings. The Iowa Lottery made payouts to its lucky Powerball winners, along with some lucky losers thanks to a reporting error that led to incorrect winning numbers being posted on the state's website. The lottery mistakenly posted incorrect winning numbers on Monday's Powerball game online. During the roughly seven hours it took to correct the mistake, players with matching numbers were able to come forward and cash in on the incorrect numbers for prizes ranging from $4 to $200. The Iowa Lottery streams the Powerball drawings live on its website every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. Two people in different locations then enter results from the drawings before they are recorded on the Lottery's website. Back in December, the drawing was conducted correctly, but some of the results were entered incorrectly, according to a post on the Lottery's blog. The incorrect numbers went live on the statewide gaming system and the Iowa Lottery website around 12.30 a.m. on a Tuesday in December. It doesn't tell the date. Around 12.30 a.m. and remained up until about 7.15 a.m. By 3.30 p.m. the corrected numbers were posted and the lottery resumed cashing the correct winning tickets. Powerball is 
played across dozens of states and the winning numbers were posted correctly on other websites. The Iowa Lottery chalked the fumble up to human error and did not specify how many people with the incorrect numbers cashed in. Lottery staffers will continue to review drawing procedures with an eye toward improvements in the future. The Lottery's blog post read, How about this for a disaster? Zillow wrote down millions slashed workforce due to algorithmic home buying disaster. It was a disaster. It was a real estate disaster. In November 2021, online real estate marketplace Zillow told shareholders it would wind down its Zillow offers operations and cut 25% of the company's workforce, which is about 2,000 employees over the next several quarters. The home flipping unit's woes were the result of the error rate in the ML algorithm it used to predict home prices. Zillow Offers was a program through which the company made cash offers on properties based on a quotation mark Zestimate of home values derived from an ML algorithm. The idea was to renovate the properties and flip them quickly. But a Zillow spokesperson told in dark places, the algorithm had a median error rate of 1.9% and could be as high as 6.9% for off-market homes. Zillow bought 27,000 homes through the Zillow Offers program since its launch in April 2018, but sold only 17,000 through the end of September 2021. Black Swan events like the COVID-19 pandemic and a home renovation labor shortage contributed to the algorithm's accuracy troubles. Zillow said the algorithm had led it to unintentionally purchase homes at higher prices than its current estimates of future selling prices, resulting in a $304 million inventory write-down in quarter three of 2021. In a conference call with investors, following the announcements, Zillow co-founder and CEO Rich Barton said it might be possible to tweak the algorithm, but ultimately it was too risky. Rich Barton, maybe if you did more stuff than sitting on your desk watching your fish tank all day, this wouldn't happen. Anyway, real estate disaster. And then you got this kind of nonsense with the woke crowd going on with their global warming and that kind of stuff. Oklahoma wind turbine bent in half on fire in wild video. A massive wind turbine at one of the country's largest wind farms is no more thanks to the impacts of a strong thunderstorm that moved through central Oklahoma on Tuesday. This was a couple years ago. First responders arrived at the Traverse Wind Energy Center around 4.30 p.m. to find one of its turbines on fire. Video from the scene showed what is believed to be one of the massive GE turbines on the ground with its support structure folded as if it was made of cardboard. A spokesperson for the public service company of Oklahoma said that the site has been secured and there were no injuries. The utility company said that the cause of the incident is under investigation, but the scene looked similar to the destruction of a wind turbine in Texas after a direct lightning strike in late July. Doppler radar indicated that there was plenty of lightning around the Traverse wind facility before the turbine caught on fire, but officials have not confirmed if lightning played a role in the incident. Oh boy. Will you hear this one? Data set trained Microsoft chatbot to spew racist tweets. In March 2016, Microsoft learned that using Twitter interactions as training data data for ML algorithms 
can have dismaying results. Microsoft released Tay, an AI chatbot on the social media platform, and the company described it as an experiment in conversational understanding. The idea was that the chatbot would assume the persona of a teenage girl and interact with individuals via Twitter using a combination of ML and natural language processing. Microsoft seeded it with anonymized, I don't know what that means, public data and some material pre-written by comedians, then set it loose to learn and evolve from its interactions on the social network. I guess it's pretty important on uh, which comedians you choose there, Microsoft. Within 16 hours, the chatbot posted more than 95,000 tweets, and those tweets rapidly turned overtly racist, misogynist, and anti-Semitic. Microsoft quickly suspended the service for adjustments and ultimately pulled the plug. We are deeply sorry for the unintended, offensive, and hurtful tweets from Tay, which do not represent who we are and what we stand for. You fed it freaking c- comedian's material. What do you think is going to happen? Nor how we designed Tay. Peter Lee, corporate VP of Microsoft Research and Incubations, wrote in a post on Microsoft's official blog following the incident. Lee noted that Tay's predecessor, I can't even pronounce this word, X-I-A-O-I-C-E, released by Microsoft in China, China, in 2014, had successfully conducted conversations with more than 40 million people in the two years prior to Tay's release. What Microsoft didn't take into account was that a group of Twitter users would immediately begin tweeting racist and misogynist comments to Tay. The bot quickly learned from that material, and incorporated it into its own tweets. Although we had prepared for many types of abuses of the system, we had made a critical oversight for the specific attack. As a result, Tay tweeted wildly inappropriate and reprehensible words and images. And Paul Chadwick, chief executive in charge, this one's for you. Holy mackerels! Here's a bit of a technological flop. Kinda. The Microsoft Connect. Microsoft's 3D camera peripheral can't be written off as a total failure. It's so well out of the gate. It was popular among artists and researchers. And Apple eventually bought the company behind its technology to power the iPhone X's Face ID. But despite Microsoft's insistence that you are the controller, its promise for gaming never panned out. Microsoft's focus on Kinect turned out to be a huge strategic blunder, particularly when the Xbox One debuted. The Xbox One was compromised from a price and design perspective by the inclusion of a Kinect in every box, with almost no worthwhile games to show for it. Microsoft later took a dramatic decision to discontinue the device entirely, even removing its connector on subsequent Xbox One revisions. One thing about that Xbox Connect is ghost hunters love it. You can use it to capture EVPs and ghosts moving around your house and stuff. So, I say that's a pretty good score for Microsoft. Here's some more trouble AI caused, this time with Amazon. Amazon AI-enabled recruitment tool only recommended men. Like many large companies, Amazon is hungry for tools that can help its HR function screen applications for the best candidates. In 2014, Amazon started working on AI-powered recruiting software to do just that. There was only one problem. The system vastly preferred male candidates. In 2018, Reuters broke the news that Amazon had scrapped the project. Amazon's system gave candidates star ratings 
from one to five. But the ML models at the heart of the system were trained on 10 years worth of resumes submitted to Amazon, most of them from men. As a result of that training data, I'm not going to say data anymore, I'm going to say data. The system started penalizing, penalizing, how come every word can be pronounced two different ways? Um, I'm going to say, let's say, the system started penalizing phrases, because that's funnier, in uh, resumes that included the word women's and even downgraded candidates for all women colleges. At the time, Amazon said the tool was never used by Amazon recruiters to evaluate candidates. The company tried to edit the tool to make it neutral, but ultimately decided it couldn't guarantee it wouldn't learn some other discriminatory way of sorting candidates and scrapped the project. What went wrong with the electronic passport gates at UK airports? Thousands of passengers were left waiting in queue for more than three hours at airports on Tuesday evening after a nationwide failure of the electronic passport gate technology system. Nearly all major British airports were affected as the country's 270 e-gates, the automated facial recognition systems, at the border were closed for more than four hours. So what exactly happened? Will those affected be able to get compensation and could it happen again? Just before 8 p.m. on Tuesday night, engineers detected a network issue on the system that runs the e-gates which are in place at 15 air and rail ports around the country. It also affected some policing, passport, and immigration systems. The problem forced e-gates to be shut at major airports including Heathrow, Gatwick, Manchester, and Edinburgh. Border officials had to manually process travelers instead, causing huge delays and tailbacks. The system was back online by 12.30 a.m. Despite calls for transparency over what was behind the issue, the government has so far been vague, blaming technical issues within the Home Office Network. In a statement to Parliament, Tom Persglove, Minister of State for Legal Migration and the Border, said that Border Force was confident it had found a permanent fix for the issue. He ruled out a cyber attack as the cause, but would not give any more details, saying he did not want to preempt the investigations the Home Office was carrying out. Persglove added, I sincerely apologize for the disruption that occurred. I can assure the House that the Home Security and I will be entering in our determination to ensure every possible lesson is learned to ensure that this does not happen again. Of course, it wouldn't have anything to do with illegal immigrants coming into the country or anything like that. How about this AI disaster? Healthcare algorithm failed to flag black patients. In 2019, a study published in Science revealed that a healthcare prediction algorithm used by hospitals and insurance companies throughout the U.S. to identify patients in need of high-risk care management programs was far less likely to flag black patients. High-risk care management programs provided trained nursing staff and primary care monitoring to chronically ill patients in an effort to prevent serious complications. But the algorithm was much more likely to recommend white patients for these programs than black patients. The AI is racist. The study found that the algorithm used healthcare spending as a proxy for determining an individual's healthcare needs. But, according to Scientific American, the healthcare costs of sicker black patients were on par with the costs of healthier white people, which meant they received lower risk scores even when their need was greater. The study's researchers suggested that a few factors may have contributed. Yeah, you're greed! First, people of color are more likely to have lower incomes, which, even when insured, 
may make them less likely to access medical care. Implicit bias may also cause people of color to receive lower quality care. While the study didn't name the algorithm or the developer, the researchers told Scientific American they were working with the developer to address the situation. The ultimate goal of the World Economic Forum is to create a global social credit score system, just like China. China! Agenda 2045. They're going to stage a worldwide cyber attack. And the only way you'll be protected will be as if you get that digital ID. Thanks, but no thanks. And that's all the show this week. It's going to happen anyway. There's nothing we can do about it. But, hope it can give you something to think about anyway. Kyle Lovren is coming back on the show next week. And we'll see you then. Thanks, Jimmy Haunted. Paul Chadwick. Thank you for listening. God bless you.